Good morning all, I hope you're well. Um, I'm sat here having my second coffee of the day, quarter past 11, bit of a rainy one here in Cornwall. I'm kind of sad that our little dry spell has ended, but on the flip side, the farm and the garden definitely needs a little bit of moisture right now, because it has been really, really dry. Um, and it means I won't have to go watering today, which is a bit of a bonus too. So I was looking at that lamb meat that I had in the fridge this morning. And my first thought that I was going to make um, like a nice bowl of stew with lots of vegetables and then making some lovely little wild garlic dumplings that all nestle in the top. And then, you know, and they go all like crispy a little bit on the top. Mm. And then I realised I don't have any suet. So I've written suet on the shopping list. <laughs> And now I have to get dumplings out of my mind. But that kind of did make me take another virtual leap from nice stodgy English dumpling to um, Asian dumplings or wontons. And then I remembered that in the freezer, I have a couple of packets of wonton wrappers left from when I went on that camp in November with Rick and Damon. And, and I did them a lovely spicy cabbage wontons. Um, and then I thought, oh, I could do duck wontons so I could like chop up that meat really finely, mix onion through. I don't have any spring onions, sadly, um, but chili and maybe, maybe some Chinese five spice, maybe not, don't hold me to that. Um, but like lots of yummy Asian flavors in with the meat. And then I could either make a broth and serve them because you can like poach them in broth and they kind of float and they're all delicious and yummy. Or you can fry them and make them all crispy and delicious and yummy. Um, and they're delicious and yummy whichever way you cook them. So I've got a packet of these out of the freezer. Long story short, mum just came over and our adorable neighbours, the guys that run the Thai restaurant in Lou, which is obviously shut at the moment, they brought round another meal for us last night and I'd actually completely forgotten but Johnny and I had both eaten the fajitas and we were both stuffed and we're like, oh, we'll come and get it in the morning. Totally forgot. Mum's just brought it over and I don't know what it is, but oh my gosh, it smells so good. Can you see that it looks to be minced chicken and vegetables and stuff? So this is perfect. I'm going to serve this. They also done a portion of rice. Love you guys. Thank you. So I'm going to reheat this tonight for tea, reheat the rice. We can have half of that each, half of the rice each, and then some of those little duck wontons on the side. Perfect. Oh, I do love it when a plan comes together. So that's going to be my first job of the day. And because it's raining, I like to have a nice lazy day in the kitchen, just making stuff that I want to make really. Sounds a lot of fun to me. So I've got this half an onion in the fridge, so I'm gonna dice that up finely. Now you could use any leftover meat for this, I would imagine. Um, just beware if you're using poultry that you don't cook it or reheat it too many times. Obviously there's a safety issue there, but certainly with all the red meats, the beef, the pork, uh, the lamb, absolutely no problems there whatsoever. And great way and tasty way to use up your leftovers. Now, even though I've bought those little wonton wrappers ready-made. There are recipes all over the internet if you want to make your own up, if you don't have any in your freezer, but you fancy giving it a go. I've never done it. I imagine it's a bit faffy, but hey, I imagine you've got a lot of time on your hands right now. So maybe put it to wanton use. So I've got some Chinese five spice going in. This is the onion, the garlic, and the red chili. Okay, not sure I'm going to use all of this lamb. So I also found half a bottle of hoisin sauce in the fridge. So I'm going to add some of that. And, and I've got that box of frozen coriander that's been in the freezer for a couple of weeks. So I'll dice some of that up too, I think. I reckon that's going to be pretty tasty. There's a little bit of hoisin sauce going in. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, you see how that's starting to stick together. That's going to be brilliant in those little wonton wrappers. 
<gasps> oh, I'm excited for dinner. This is gonna be tasty. Okay, now I've got my little wonton factory open. So up there are a ton of the little wrappers in one of these packets. And that's what they look like. And then all you do is take a teaspoon of whatever filling you want to use, then a little bowl of water, and you run your finger along the side and along the other side. Then pinch those two corners together. Where you've put the water, it will stick together. Make sure there's no meaty filling bit in that seam. Press all the air out as well as you fold. Then another little dribble of water on that corner. And there you have it, one very cute little wonton. So I'm gonna use these up. I'm probably not gonna use all of them, but we'll see how we get on. I've also just discovered that season nine of Walking Dead is on Amazon Prime. So I'm now catching up on that. In have interrupted bones for a bit of Walking Dead. Um, so I'm going to sit here, fill these little wontons and uh, catch up with some zombie action. So there we go. There's our little pile of adorable little lamb wontons. Looking forward to having them for dinner. Um, there is still some wrappers left in this bag, maybe 20 or so, but I'm gonna bin them. One of the ingredients is egg, so it's not worth risking anyone getting poorly. If it was just flour and water and stuff, then I would have happily refrozen them, but I'm not going to do that. So there we are, all in a little tub. I'm also gonna pop this piece of damp kitchen paper in just to stop them drying out. And there we are wallop them in the fridge. I am most certainly looking forward to my dinner tonight. Right, it's half 12, Johnny will be home any minute now for lunch, and I'm just gonna run out and clean up the chickens. Ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> that time of day, lovelies, here we are once again. So a couple of you have commented on my lovely kitchen, which thank you. It's a pretty impressive kitchen, I have to say. Before we got the crazy Neff products that are now adorning the walls um the total cost of that kitchen build was i'm gonna say 300 pounds i think the most expensive thing was the sink which cost 70 pounds brand new everything else and and that's 300 quid also includes the cost of the oven that i got for on ebay as well um cheap as chips built out of pallets and it's my perfect kitchen i designed every millimeter of it obviously um, and my gorgeous grumpy builder just like knocked it up for me out of a few pallets and some scrap we had lying around the farm be still my beaten heart i'm a very very lucky girl seven eggs in the basket and in the back there is another membrane looking egg and unfortunately somebody's found it and scoffed it Dang. I mean, I didn't want to eat this, please don't get me wrong, but I think I've said before, you just don't want your chickens learning how good their eggs taste because then they start eating them for fun. So, need to dispose of that. Alrighty, it's time to use these courgettes up now and I'm gonna make that pizza base slash courgette bread type stuff. Uh, just trying to work out whether I can be bothered to grate them by hand or if I can be bothered to use the food processor and then have to wash it up afterwards. I think I'm going to grate by hand just to make clean up quicker and easier. Quick rinse first though. I wonder how long it's going to take me to regret doing this by hand. It's only five courgettes, right? Okay, so that's it all shredded down. Now I'm just going to sprinkle over a little bit of salt and all that's going to do is draw out even more moisture and you can see already that there's a lot of water coming out of those courgettes. Just gonna leave that for about 15 or 20 minutes. That salt is gonna extract even more. And then we've got the fun job of draining all of that water out. Wow, these courgettes have been in the fridge. Man, they are for a reason. Okay, just try and get that all under the level. Because as the water is extracted, it's gonna become saline water, obviously. And and that is going to help cover all of the little pieces of 
courgette with the saltiness. Now it's the fun job of squeezing out as much liquid as you can. And then popping it onto a clean tea towel. So there we go, there's our big pile of shredded and drained courgette. There is all the water that came out of them. You can see why we went that extra mile to remove all of that because that would have just led to having a big soggy mess. Now you could use that if you really wanted to, but don't forget that is quite salty. So if you wanted to use that as a stock or something, probably best to freeze it in like ice cube trays and then just chuck one or two into a casserole or a soup or a stew or something. Um, and yeah, I guess you'd have good nutrition and good flavour, maybe? Don't know. I personally bin it. And then the next fun part of this process is pick up your clean tea towel full of courgette and then just try and squeeze any more moisture out of there that you can. Now, if you've got problems with your hands, arthritis or anything like that, this recipe isn't gonna be for you. This really is quite a hand workout. So if you struggle with your hands, then try and rope someone else in to do this bit for you. It's crazy how much water comes out of them, huh? You don't need to get it all out, but certainly you wanna get the bulk of it out. You can see why I buy those polystyrene low carb breads because even though I prefer the taste of this and I prefer the ingredient list in this, it is ever such a long-winded process. Alrighty, then rinse your bowl out, dry it off a little bit, pop your courgette back in, and then put that one in the wash. And then into this bowl, we're gonna add two, about two teaspoons of garlic powder, probably about that much, some coconut flour, and then some eggs. Oops, it's those thin shelled ones, look. Some black pepper and some salt. That rest of that salt that we put in before, that all ended up in the water, so don't worry about making this too salty. And then just mush it all together. So you've got a weird courgette type paste. So when your goo looks like that, you're gonna spread it out onto baking trays. I cannot find the two big pieces of this silicon reusable baking paper stuff that fit these two pans. I've looked everywhere. And I know as soon as I finish making this damn courgette stuff, I'm gonna ready find them. Grr. So I'm just gonna have to like make this work and I'm probably gonna have to cook two loads, which is really annoying. And this piece is even really smaller, look. So basically you just get like a handful of it and you just press it out. It's nice and thin. And all you the people out there that um, aren't low carb are just gonna be thinking, what the hell? You have to go to this kind of extent just to make some weird bread replacement. Yeah, pretty much. There are quicker ways. There are the waffles or the chuffles, which I've made before on this channel. Uh, they are much, much easier than this. Uh, it's just, I'm doing this because I had those courgettes and as an actual vegetable, like not a big lover of the courgette, but in this, I really do like this. It's very, very tasty. So, um, I think I might need to put some zombies on for keeping me company doing this bit. And I'll show you, oh, and then when you've done this, you pop them in the oven, obviously, and bake them. So I'll bring you guys back in when they're all finished and cooked. So Johnny is now putting Myrtle's starter motor back into place. His van's down at the garage, and I think it's being emptied this afternoon. So, oh, fingers crossed. Okay, here it is. We've got two batches or two pieces of courgette bread, pizza base, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're all cooked and out of the oven now. You can see it's really nice and bendy. It probably sounds gross if you're not into this kind of thing, but it's actually, it's very tasty. It just tastes really savoury. And if you make that into a pizza and you've got all your pizza toppings on there, honestly, it's just really, really good. I really like this, but like you saw, it takes ever such a lot of effort to cook. So I've got this little bit left over, so I'm now gonna pop that in um, on the baking sheets that I've just freed up and get that last little bit cooked and then we're done.
Just ask Johnny if he'd seen the bigger pieces of silicon baking paper. Yes, yes he had. And there's my little tub of my funny little courgette bread pieces or whatever you want to call them. Um, honestly, for all that work, that's really not a lot of food. So if anyone has a better, but like a healthy, something ideally that's got vegetables in, a low carb or keto kind of bread replacement that I can easily bulk make, that would be really handy. Um, and I think because it's, it's not raining anymore, but it's grey and it's windy and it's cold and I'm kind of enjoying being in a nice warm toasty kitchen. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is make a load of keto waffles as well and then just freeze them. So then I know that they're there and I can go to them instead of the bread and you can see where my mind's going here, right? So um, yeah, I'm gonna do some more baking now, but this time it's gonna be waffles. And these are so much quicker and easier to make, oh my God. So 100 grams of grated cheese. This one's got like spices and chili in it, which is quite nice. A couple of eggs and some garlic powder and you can mix that all up and chuck it in the waffle maker. We eat a lot of garlic in this house. I buy, I buy garlic granules in a catering sized tub. So I can just top this one up I've also probably got about 20 cloves of fresh garlic. I'm, yeah, I'm a bit of a sucker for the stuff. I was looking at that yesterday, actually. I might need to freeze the garlic that I've got fresh in the fridge. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to get through it quick enough and I don't want it to go to waste. So I might pop that on the list and see if that's something we need to do at some point. There we go. That's our chuffle batter. And the green light's on the, on the waffle maker, which means we're ready to rumble. Half an inch side. Spread it out a little bit. And one of these makes a cracking meal on low carb. So 15 minutes on the timer and that will be golden and lush. So we've got two waffles still cooking over there. We've got the two waffles that are cooling there to go in the fridge. We've got some of the little wontons there. We've got some more in the pan frying. In here, we've got that lovely unknown dish from our lovely Thai neighbor. And we've got the rice that she gave us is in the microwave heating up. Loudy, loudy me. Oh, and over here, we've got a bowl with sweet chili dipping sauce in and another bowl with soy sauce and sesame oil. And we've also got some vino. Good job. Oh, we have some yummy smells going down. Oh, they are going to be so tasty. Right, so there we are. We've got that lovely Thai dish and that rice. We've got the crispy little wontons. So dive into them, Johnny. You can dunk in soy sauce and sesame and or sweet chili. Do whatever you like. Wow, that was a fantastic dinner. Holy moly, all the flavours going on. So I'm going to sit here and have a cheeky little glass of Pinot and then... I need to clean that up. Grr. Just about to top up my sweetie jar for the chickens and somebody asked me a week or two ago what the sweeties were. So this brand is called Marriages, strangely, um, and it's a royal variety mixed corn. And they absolutely love it. And it is for chickens. That camera's looking a little bit wonky there, huh? Oh well, it's the end of the day and we've had some wine, so what can you expect? Whoa! I'm quite sure there's an easier and less messy way to do that, but... Oh, where's the fun in that, eh? Sweeties! Come on, Jack. Hey, girl. You win, you win, you win, you win. You little monkeys. <laughs> this one is definitely trying to bite me. I'm getting out of here while I can. 
thanks again for hanging out with me as always i really appreciate you spending your time here if you've enjoyed it please go and hit that thumbs up for me thank you and i shall catch up with you in tomorrow's vlog take care you guys keep smiling over and out